center stage is this debate about the role of God that's taking place both in the church and in the broader culture. Who's going to define family? Who's going to define marriage? And all of a sudden we have these images of the outer reaches of our universe, or at least the furthest we have ever seen, of the spectacular glory of God. And it reminds us that there's a power greater than us. And perhaps we should take his counsel on some of those things a little closer to home. Have you been following the news about the James Webb Space Telescope? It is truly incredible, just remarkable stuff. And we want to show you one of the latest images released just this morning. This is Galaxy Glass Z13, the oldest galaxy ever captured on camera. Keep in mind that scientists believe the universe is 13.7 billion years old and that this galaxy came into existence when the universe was just about 300 million years old. So it's a baby. But it's more than that, because as you look at all the wondrous images coming from the Webb telescope, still only in its first weeks of operation, keep in mind that you're actually witnessing the deep, distant past, because we are only seeing the light from these images. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. So it took light traveling at that speed over 13 billion years to get here from that galaxy. That's mind blowing. It is humbling. It makes us feel here on Earth a mere grain of sand on a near infinite beach. Or is it? That's perhaps a spiritual question. But the science behind the Webb telescope and its ability to bring us these images is almost as fascinating. It took 20 years to develop the Webb telescope. It is 100 times more sensitive than its predecessor, the Hubble telescope. To achieve that sensitivity, the Webb is in a stationary position beyond our moon. It senses infrared light, which can peer through billions of miles of dust that obscures other lenses. Its 18 mirrors can be individually adjusted to minute degrees, enabling it to peer deeper into space and further back in time than anything else. But they are fragile. Even the human hair would just destroy something. The shipping container itself takes years to prepare. You want it the right size. You need a certain environment to keep it environmentally stable. To protect it from light and heat from the sun, it has a sun shield that expands to the size of a tennis court. We actually have to unfold it and tighten it up almost like the sails on a ship. But these big floppity membranes in zero G, they can go all over the place. Like they can go in places you don't want them to go. They can, they can get in places where they could snag or tear or impede other, you know, other deployments. Last March, when all 18 mirrors were properly aligned, NASA received its first test image of a single star. This is an engineering image that was really there just to say we focused it right and there's a lot of galaxies, <laughs> you know. You know, the, the engineers were like, what are all those galaxies doing there? <laughs> we're realizing we're the first people that have ever seen these galaxies. And now the rest of the world is seeing them too. We can only guess at what discoveries and what wonders await. Pastor Alan Jackson is joining us tonight to take it all in. Pastor Jackson is often here when we try to make sense of our earthly troubles. So how about hearing him out on hope and discovery and what lies ahead in the images from this telescope? You know, Pastor Jackson, one person has already described the findings this way. It's like a birthday, Christmas, an anniversary, a graduation, Thanksgiving, and Hanukkah all wrapped into one. And I think us mere mortals see the same thing. Absolutely, Doug. It's good to be with you again on such a celebratory occasion. It really is. What, what were your first uh, thoughts when you saw these images? Well, you know, I couldn't help it. It was a sense of elation and celebration with these images we've never seen before from billions of miles away of the splendor and the glory of God. Um, I don't know how you see those images and it doesn't bring a sense of joy to your heart. You know, I, I think scientifically speaking, uh, there's this great understanding that the universe evolved from the Big Bang. I guess that's been drawn into some question as well these days. I'm not following that science. But uh, when people look at the Big Bang theory, I've often wondered well, what preceded that and the scientific explanation is, well, there was dust and gravity attracted the dust until it compacted and there was a big... And I said, well, who put the dust there? <laughs> and you get, you get where I'm going, right? I do. You know, I started my academic career in the basic sciences, 
And it was the study of science that really led me to yield my life completely to the Lord, because the more we understood creation, the more obvious it was there had to be some intelligent design in the midst of all of that. Exactly how it happened, I'm not, there's enough theories that I enjoy walking between them and trying to understand. But I have to smile at the timing of this. You know, I don't believe it's a coincidence. This, the Webb telescope's been 30 years in development and being deployed, $10 billion. And it's released at this unique point in human history. And at least in our nation, center stage is this debate about the role of God that's taking place both in the church and in the broader culture. Who's going to define family? Who's going to define marriage? And all of a sudden, we have these images of the outer reaches of our universe, or at least the furthest we have ever seen, of the spectacular glory of God. And it reminds us that there's a power greater than us. And perhaps we should take his counsel on some of those things a little closer to home. Uh, so well stated. You know, throughout human history, <clears throat> regardless of, of what religion it is, humans have, have uh, strived to find spiritual meaning in the heavens. I, I think oftentimes of that image that we see in cities, statues of, of Atlas holding the world on his shoulder. Uh, in, in Greek mythology, I guess Atlas seems to have been a marine creature who supported the pillars that held heaven and earth apart. Uh, he was uh, one of the titans who took part in the war against Zeus, for which, uh, as a punishment, he was condemned to hold aloft the heavens. But when I see that image, I often thought, what is he standing on if, if he's holding up the earth? And as I, I gaze through, in, in my casual approach, various spiritual interpretations of the heavens, I hearken back to the first words of Scripture. And I'm the last person who should be reading Scripture to you, but I will. The first words of the Old Testament. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. That seems to have special meaning as we look at these images. Well, it has special meaning with these images, but it also has special meaning for our lives. You know, if, if you'll accept those first verses of the Bible, that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, then the rest of the book has meaning for us because I want to listen to the counsel and the wisdom of the creator and the designer of all things. If I reject those first verses, and they are highly contested even within the circles of the church these days, then the rest of the Bible's nonsense. It's really not much more than just make-believe. So every one of us has to process that and make a decision. The Bible's not a science book. It's not a history book. But it presents to us an almighty God that created the heavens and the earth. And we're a part of his creation. We're a finite part of the creation of an infinite God. And these pictures are the most beautiful, colorful display of his glory uh, that I think we will see until we see Jesus in all of his glory. Mm -hmm. And that will be a spectacular day. I, I started out in, in that uh, uh, tape piece we did uh, suggesting that the, the magnanimity, uh, magnanimity, is that the right word? No, the, the hugeness of the universe is, is humbling to us, that yeah. we are, in many respects, little grains of sand in an infinite beach. Uh, does that diminish uh, God, or does it, does it make him greater? Well, to me, it just it makes me laugh at the, the magnitude of God. We have this natural tendency to, to create God in our own image, that his strength is like my strength or his intellect is like my intellect. And the invitation of Scripture is that his kingdom is not like anything we've ever known, that he is a different kind of being altogether, that the greatest aspect of us as human beings is that we're created in the image of God. And that he would allow his spirit to indwell his creation brings a dignity to every human being and every human life that is really beyond our intellectual ability to even process. We're just asked to embrace that sanctity of human life and the remarkable imprint of human beings as the image bearers of Almighty God. And I think the heavens display that in such a profound way. You know, in Psalm 147, it says that he, he knows the stars by name. And I believe that. And I start reading about these pictures and their numbers. And I mean, I get lost pretty quick in the distances and what a light year is. Six trillion miles is a long way. Yeah. But God knows every star by name. And I believe that literally. And so it makes it easier for me to worship him, serve him, yield my life to him, yield my will to him, because he is the creator of all things. You know, I'm often surprised at how many scientists turn out to be very religious people. And so it didn't surprise me when you said that you started out studying science. I uh, always appreciate your perspective, Pastor Alan Jackson. Thank you so much. It's always good to be with you, Doug. 
Hi, I'm Doug McKelway, and thank you for watching Centerpoint. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Leave a comment below and keep the conversation going by sharing this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.